Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we are on episode number... 10. Ten. <laughs> Two hands, all fingers extended. We're there. I don't know what to do for 11. We'll figure it out then. Uh, yeah, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. It's been a long road. We've, we've made it 10 episodes. I can't believe it. Um, it's been 10 weeks. Yeah. It seems like a lot longer than it sounds when you say it like <laughs> yeah. that, but thanks. So anyway, uh, <laughs> we've got some pretty good topics for you today, or for this week, rather. Um, Kevin Kerr has had an article where he was kind of breaking down the team, his assessment of the team, and we're going to take some of the bullet points and give our own um, uh, assessment. opinions, assessment, yeah. if you will, on those bullet points, and we're going to be talking about, what else are we going to do? Uh, Tyler Sagan is a hot topic yes. this week after uh, saying that he basically wants to do the John Tavares treatment right. and go into free agency <laughs> next summer. <laughs> yeah. We're going to touch on uh, third jerseys again. We talked about it previously, but mm. it was kind of a topic that came up again on Twitter, so we're going to reach out on that. We yeah. And then we'll have time for story time. Yeah. And I have a little story time as well. Mm -hmm. And oh, also, don't forget about the 200 subs, which we'll touch on that actually. Uh, at the top of the we're show. at 181 right now. Yeah. So we're very close. Getting real close. 19 more people, and we're going to give them another shirt away. Yep. So go ahead and get on with that. Yeah. So, uh, you ready to start the show? I'm ready. Okay. Let's do it. B14. Bingo. I think I won 20 bucks just now. Not sure, bad. Sure you did. You got it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, first topic we want to bring up. Uh, Kevin Kerr's had an article uh, on The Athletic, and what he was talking about was the assessment of the team. So we kind of – we didn't want to go through all of what he said because, again, it's The Athletic. They want you to pay to read it. But um, we wanted to take those points and make our own assessment. So one of the things that Kerr said was one of the biggest things to look at for the team was the health of the Joes and the age of the Joes and would they be able to perform, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I don't know if there was something you wanted to, to jump in first and, and start. Sure. Yeah. I mean, okay. we, we kind of touched on this before, but mm -hmm. um, Joe Thornton's going to be coming back from another knee injury. Right. And But this time he has a lot more time to, uh, to rehab. Mm -hmm. So compared to last year, having gone through the same knee surgery, he right. did. Um, which we won't be talking about pick ligaments. This time. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's just the recovery time for that for that injury and that surgery is yeah. so long that he didn't have as much time starting last season as mm -hmm. he did going into this season. And before last season started, I thought, and we didn't have the show then, but I always thought and talked about it, like he's not going to feel normal again until about Christmas time. That's when he's really going to finally get back into the groove and play right. again, which right around New Year's is when he started point per game. For a while yeah. until he got hurt again, mm -hmm. so I think um, I think he's going to be better than he was last year, um, and I don't mean in terms of point production, just healthier. Right, right. Uh, he's the way he, his style of play is not so um, destructive to his body. Yeah. So I think uh, barring some kind of catastrophic, catastrophic or um, I don't know horrific knee injury again sure. or some some freak accident, mm -hmm. I think he's going to be fine. Uh, Pavelski also started the year last year with a shoulder injury, a wrist injury. It was a wrist yeah, injury. Yeah, finger or something. Like yeah. That, a broken finger or something. I think he had. It was a carryover from the playoffs yeah, or yeah. something. So um, he's going to be healthy again mm -hmm. and starting the season. And once he got healthy last year, he was also uh, point per game. Nice. Just about point per game player, especially when they brought in Kane. And at that point, Jumbo was already out. Um, Pavelski really stepped it up. So I think we'll see a full season out of both. Jumbo and Pavelski and going back to Thornton like he never really missed any games before this these two injuries right he would play a full 82 game season he's been an Iron Man yeah. yeah so um he's one of the toughest people I think Kerr's even wrote about how he is one of the toughest guys he's ever seen and he's mm -hmm. covered the NHL for a number of years so um in terms of of health and overall fitness um, I think Joe's going to be hitting the season mm -hmm. in stride so it's gonna be great yeah, I, I have the same kind of feeling. I think that Jumbo is going to bounce back. Um, I, I think that the health was a you know a big nagging thing for him last season. Obviously, mm -hmm. um, getting to that that point where he had the knee injury and he couldn't play. But even prior to that, he was getting healthy to the point where he was healthy and then back down again. Right. So I think just him starting off the year with um, you know his health in 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 good status. I think that's going to bring some confidence for him in his game. 
uh, like Aaron said, the, the way he plays is not you know crash and bang. Mm-hmm. It's puck protect and it's find the open man. It's not about speed for him. And in a game that's changing more towards speed, he's still relevant. So it just speaks to the level of skill that Jumbo has where the game is changing to where you have to be faster to be um, relevant in the game. And it hasn't really it hasn't really stopped him from being effective. Um, and we've seen that. Like you said, he was point per game for yeah. the, the amount of time that he was there. Yeah. So uh, I'm not really concerned with Jumbo. Um, I know he's uh, getting up there in age. That's life. You're going to get older. That's just what happens. We'll be saying the same thing about you know, Timo Meyer in you know 15 years or whatever it is, mm-hmm. right? So it, it, that part, it just is what it is. Is the guy effective? Yes. I don't care about his age then. I just want to know if he can play the game, and he can, and he plays it well. So I'm not too worried about that. All right, here's another question for you sure. relevant to that. Let's say Jumbo plays a full 82-game season, mm-hmm. and whether or not the Sharks win or the Cup or not, do you think he plays again next year? Yeah, I still think he. I think he would sign another one-year contract. Um, I think you're only going to see one-year contracts out yeah. of Jumbo from this point on. When do I see him stop signing one-year contracts? That I don't know. I mean, you, we could see like a Yager type situation. When do you see the Sharks stop? signing those one-year contracts yeah well it, it comes down to when he's not effective anymore mm-hmm. and the fact that they're signing him for another one year he's still effective mm-hmm. at least in the eyes of the gm and i'm sure the eyes of everybody on the team um they take that feedback from the other players i'm yeah. sure and you know is this some guy that you feel confident we should bring back and i think most of the guys in the team would love to have him back on the team for the full 82 that'd be great uh, it's also a matter of depth of yeah. what the team has down the center in the mm-hmm. pipeline which Centers. I don't really know anyone the next two years that's going to be coming up that would take the place of a first-line center. Yeah. Other than Couture. Couture is the closest, but... but then who takes the second line? Right. And maybe, that's where we maybe, had yeah. talked about previously about um, Wilson talking about bringing in a difference maker. Right. I think that's that's probably the position he's looking to, to fill. Yeah. Because um, he can sign one-year contracts, you know, but at some point, you know, he's at the, he's at the other end of, of his career. Mm-hmm. So... Again, is what it is. Age is age. You can't slow that down. It's not like you can, oh, you know, he needs to work on his skating. Okay, you go out there and you work on your skating. Oh, he needs to work on his shot. Okay, you work on your shot. You can't work on your age. <laughs> your age is your age. You can't do anything about that. So as long as you're still effective, what? I say you can't teach age. No, exactly, right? <laughs> um, like you can't teach speed. <laughs> yeah. You can work on it, but right. and with age, yeah, it's, again, as long as you're being effective on the ice, that's really all it is. When he stops being effective on the ice, that's when you'll see him. All right, so what about Pavelski? What do you think about Pavelski? Yeah, Pavelski, I mean, it's hard for me. I, I see Pavelski as, you know, he, he's a point-per-game player, and I see him working real hard and grinding it out, and he's great tipper in front of the net. He's always in the right spot in the slot, um, Thornton finding him, those banging in those one-timers, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, goalie sunk in real deep trying to protect the post, and, and it comes back out to the slot, and Pavelski finds that open hole. And we've seen that happen so many times, and he's yeah. great at it. Beyond that, I mean, he he doesn't bring a more physical presence, usually, other than standing in front of the net, which he does a very good job of. Um, he's not particularly fast. His hands are pretty good. Um, we've seen him on the shootout, but in terms of getting around defenders with, like, skill and grace, yeah. he doesn't really have that aspect it's of the game either. Game. Yeah. But that's not his game, exactly. Just like the speed game isn't Thornton's game. Um it's really going to be interesting to see Thornton, Pavelski, and Kane together on the top line. Because yeah. Kane's going to bring that speed of if they dump the puck and he's going to go in and get it. Yeah. And he's going to get... And possession. he's going to crash and bang hard, too. Yeah. yeah. I just hope he doesn't tear up his shoulder in the process. Right. But <laughs> we saw Kane and Pavelski together. Mm-hmm. Pretty much once Kane joined the team, he was together. Yeah. Inseparable with Pavelski, and they were great together. Yeah. And that's when Pavelski really was a point-per-game player with Kane on his line. Yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, I think Kane only enhances the guys that are around him. You could put him with any of those guys. We talked about putting him with Couture, yeah, and potentially being a, even a better matchup, um, not matchup, but line mate, I guess, with uh, with Couture, just because of the speed. Well, I think no matter who you put Kane with, Kane's going to uh, enhance that line. It's kind of the Joe Thornton effect, right, where mm-hmm. you put anyone with Jumbo Joe, and you said put you know, your son Calvin, your, yeah. your two year old, with him, yeah. and he's you know scored twenty goals. So, yeah. um, I think we're in really good shape. Mm-hmm. I think we're in really good shape when it comes to the, to our forward core. Um, I, I look at our top two lines, and we said this last time too, there's not really a line that you draw between the first line and the second line. Mm-hmm. You just have two very good lines. And not all teams have that. Some teams like top load 
or some teams try to spread it out, but some it's teams not have to top load. Yeah, they yeah. don't have enough talent to make two full scoring lines. Right, and I think we're in a very good situation where we have that, and we've talked about our third line. Our third mm-hmm. line's dirty too, mm-hmm. and the ones that you would at least put together. And they're going to mismatch. Yeah, I think points. mismatches are are one thing. The other thing, and I want to say it last episode too, and I just forgot. Um, I think you can play that third line against a second line. Mm-hmm. And still be successful. Mm-hmm. So not necessarily creating a mismatch third line to third line, and we're just better, but having our third line play up to the level that their second line's playing at, and being able to take them one on one. Right mm-hmm. when that line changes off, and you put their third line out, then you get the mismatch yeah. of our second line coming out too. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's not just even third line against third line. We're better. It's our team can play, or our third line can play against their second line, freeing up our second line for their not so great. Yeah, and I think that's what we saw in the playoffs, Uh especially against Anaheim. Uh, We also saw it towards the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think those young guys on the third line are really going to step up this year. And we're going to see a big increase for all of them. Yeah, Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what that third line is going to do because we do have a lot of talent on this team. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, assuming everyone's healthy and there's no major injuries, that the Sharks, we see the increasing in Mm -hmm. scoring overall. Of the Sharks. So I don't know how many goals they they scored last year, but I I would say... We'll see an increase of right. goals, maybe another 30, 40 goals split amongst a bunch of guys because sure. you'll see a lot more. And it's funny that you bring that up because we've talked in a previous episode as well where we said we were trying to take over the amount of goals that Marlowe, losing Marlowe, yeah. you know, we wanted to bring those goals back in somehow, right? And we're saying the, the young kids got to step up. Well, the young kids stepped up so much that we scored an extra 20 or 30 goals, I believe mm-hmm. is what it was. And here we are talking about we could see them scoring as a another, as a unit as a team right. another twenty thirty goals or mm-hmm. so, um, and I don't think that's out of the question. I think that's very realistic. You know, those guys have got another year of experience under their belts. Uh, they've gelled for one more year. They've got they've got their skill levels you know elevated just a little bit more. I don't think it's out of the question to think that they're going to score another twenty thirty goals combined, especially when you're talking about having a Vander Kane and Joe Thornton potentially in the lineup for mm-hmm. the whole season, I think another 20, 30 goals is totally achievable. Yeah. Yeah. So going back uh, to his list, uh, Kane yeah. was one of the guys which we kind of started to talk about. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on Kane for the year? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I think, again, the big thing for me and and is I want to see him for the full season. And we've said this many times too. I want to see him for the full season. When he was there, like you just said, playing with Pavelski, Pavelski all of a sudden, boom, point per game player, right? Mm-hmm. And they were inseparable. And I just think that Kane is one of those guys who can elevate other players on his line uh, just by the fact that he goes out there, he crashes and bangs, just that he's a, a great goal scorer. He really is. Um, and he's fast. You know, he can get into those open areas um, quickly. It's not just top speed. You know, it's a quickness. It's a yeah. foot speed quickness. And he has he's good got hands, that. too. Yeah, he for, really does. For a big guy. He's, He's a really very, good very complete player. I mean, yeah. he really does everything fairly well. And mm-hmm. you put him on a line with guys that he's gelled well with, and especially a guy like uh, a passer like Joe, uh, Jumbo Joe, um, to get him the puck. It's going to be pretty deadly, and I'm definitely looking forward to that. Yeah. You know, I think the only thing I'm, I'm concerned with on Kane, and it's not the whole social media thing. I, that was that was my, my concern when I Before, when we originally yeah. had, had picked him up was, and you, again, you talked me down on it, but I, the only thing I'm concerned with now is the shoulder. Um, I keep hearing about the shoulder, the shoulder, and I just want that. I, I hope that that doesn't become a, an issue because that would really put a, a damper on the on the, the season for me. Some things I see a lot from other fans yeah. from Buffalo and from Winnipeg. Okay. Is a lot of them are saying now that he's gotten paid and he's gotten his contract, oh. we're not going to see him play as hard as we did at the end of last season. A lot of contracts, yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's kind of like the honeymoon phase is over. Mm-hmm. Now he's playing for his team and he got paid. He has no incentive to play well. I don't really buy that. I don't think I buy that, yeah. There's not a lot of players that are like that. Um, when you get to that NHL level and any elite level in any sport, mm-hmm. these guys are competing. They're just, you know, competitors. They yeah. they, uh, they compete in everything. They're uh, there to win. They're not there to collect a paycheck. No. Yeah. So... Um, and he kind of has a history, I guess, of it, or just checking out. But I just the sharks are always. He has a, a history team. of being younger. Is really what it comes. But down he's to, also right? has a history of a, of playing on teams that never made playoffs. That too, right? Yeah. So it's he, you're around a losing culture all the yeah. time. You you slack off. Where mm-hmm. the sharks are a completely different organization mm-hmm. in terms of of their history of um, losing, I guess, or not mm-hmm. losing. So I 
The only thing that worries me about Kane is the way he plays. We're not going to see him for a full 82 games. He's just going to get banged up. Yeah. I, I don't think... He's never played more than, I think, 74 is the most in a season in mm-hmm. his entire career. So I would venture to say anywhere between 70 and 75 games this year. So we'll see a handful of games, a dozen games maybe, where he's just not in the lineup. MIA. Yeah. yeah. And which I don't think would be necessarily a bad thing because we'll be able to plug in a guy from a lower line yeah. up there and see what they can do. And we've a already younger done guy. That. Yeah. Right. So maybe we put Hurdle on the top line. Maybe right. we put Timo Meyer or, or LeBanc on there. Mm-hmm. So we get to see what they get to do with the Joes. Right. Um, and that's the thing I think people forget. Uh, we, we already went through this phase. We, we, yeah. we didn't have Kane for X amount of games. We, we didn't, didn't have, have Jumbo. Jumbo for X amount of games. And people forget that. They go, oh, you know, we just, oh, we, we didn't do anything this offseason. All we did was resign guys that we already had. No, you're resigning a guy that didn't play much yeah. for you. So. Two guys. Yeah, two guys that didn't really play. They, a handful of games, really, is what it comes down to. I think Joe played 24 games or something. Yeah. Or 20, and Kane, Kane was after the, the, the trade deadline, yeah. right? So. It, the team largely, yes, is the same in terms of well, just the roster. The other thing that he did, which was great, was he got rid of Bodker. Yes. He got rid of the salary of Bodker, which opened up the right. salary cap. But that also produced space for the younger guys. Right. Now they're solidified in that lineup right. with him gone. Yeah. Sorry. Magnific- no, magnificent job getting that that $4 million off the books. And a lot of people were upset that Hoffman didn't stay. <laughs> I, Hoffman's a good power play specialist. He's a great right-handed... I think he's a right-handed shot and... Uh, scores a lot of power play goals he did for Ottawa last year but the whole I don't know baggage that came along yeah. with it I don't think yeah. it was worth it mm-hmm. um, it still would have been okay I think the trade would have been okay people would have gotten that, over it that whole thing was orchestrated the whole way through at no point oh, totally. did we have Hoffman and think maybe we should keep him maybe we should yeah. trade him oh they're interested we'll trade him that that never happened It would, the whole way through it was just we're going to get Hoffman so that we can trade him off more picks in to get rid of the salary. yeah and, and he already heard from uh, we Florida. In Florida, yeah. He already heard from Florida saying, we want Hoffman. Yeah. They won't trade him to us. Okay, fine. Hoffman, Hoffman. That's what happened, really. I mean, that, that has to be what happened. It but, just took an extra day, so everyone got excited. Yeah, no, like, exactly. Oh, Hoffman, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it took a day. I don't, I don't even remember. think it did, to be honest. But, Maybe it was um, an hour. <laughs> regardless, masterful job opening up um, you know, a roster spot for the young guys, because we do. I, I mean, and we've said... Imagine Bakker, you're like, oh, we should buy him out. Yeah. What if we trade him for picks? <laughs> well, who's stupid enough to take Bakker? Ottawa, hey! <laughs> Doug Wilson, man. Hey, I, and no disrespect to Bodker, but yeah, four million dollars for for a guy that was not producing like a, a four, $4 million, million dollar player should, yeah. um, and he was still able to pull that off. He's just, again, I don't get where the hate comes from. I don't get it. I mean, he does a the great hate for Bodker. No, 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 the hate for for Wilson. Oh, yeah. I don't understand it. Like, yes, we haven't won a cup yet. I get it, but I don't understand the rest of it. You know. Regardless, that's not what we're talking about. We've, we we beat that dead whole, horse too. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, uh, Kane. I think he's going to bring a whole lot to the team if he could stay healthy or be healthy for long enough to where it matters. Even a 70, 74, 75 game, whatever it is. If he's playing that long um, for for just the eighty two games in the season, if he's able to make that many games, it's going to be a huge impact on the team. We're yep. still going to hit that extra twenty or thirty goals, I think, than what we had uh, this just this past season, which is again twenty or thirty goals over and above what we had the season before right. when we were talking about replacing the goals from Patrick Marlowe. So I, I see this team offensively just being that much better. Mm-hmm. And so those was one of the points, right, was uh, the Joes, health and age. Kane, mm-hmm. um, just kind of what do you think and will he stay healthy and everything else. Um, the, one of the other points he had was just offense, right? Centers, uh, wingers, the depth that we have on, on offense. I think we've talked about that here. We've talked about it previously yeah. as well. I don't know if there's anything else you want to touch on in terms of wingers. Yeah. I think... We're, I, again, I, I feel like we're a very deep team, and even the younger guys that are stepping in, they're stepping into these third line and fourth line roles. They belong there, right? They look like they they belong there. So that's, that's they're my also take. the kind of guys. The guys that are on the third line could plug in on the second line. Oh, absolutely, Easily. even yeah. in the first line. Absolutely, they can plug in there for a handful of games if yeah. they need to be, and, and again, they won't look out of place. And again, we've 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 already seen them plugging in because we didn't have right. Joe and Kane. So. Moving on from that, defense was another point that he wanted to hit on. And I think we've, we've mentioned this before, too. The only hole we really see on defense is the hole next to Brent Burns. Right. And and Ryan, Joachim Ryan, filled in fairly admirably, I would say, for the time that he spent he there. He did well, but he's also... He wasn't quite a rookie last year. I don't think he was considered a rookie, but... 
Um, you could tell there were some games where he had some brain farts. Mm-hmm. That uh, is a growing pain with right. young defensemen. So you're going to see a better version of him this year. He's going to keep improving. Uh, he moves his feet well. Mm-hmm. I think he complements Burns very well. Um, Burns kind of needs a stay-at-home defenseman who's a smart player, almost yeah. like Vlasic in a way, um, that can read plays and break up two-on-ones right. because he's going to be out of position a lot yeah. and the forward might not be covering him right. in time. So um, I think Joachim Ryan could step into that role better than, let's say, Tim Heed or DeMello. Okay. So I think we well, see... Well, DeMello, I imagine DeMello's going to be playing... You're going to do Dilly Dilly again, right? Dylan DeMello right. and Brendan Dillon. I think you're going to see that pairing again. Um, the Braun Vlasic, you're not going to see that pairing. Yeah, you won't. split up anytime that's soon. That's yeah. probably the best defensive duo in the league. It's pretty Shut phenomenal. Shut down defensive. Yeah, it's, defensive. It, it's pretty phenomenal yeah. pairing there. Um, and I think that's, that's my only problem with Ryan playing alongside Burns is that he does have these brain farts because he's uh, you know, a younger player, he's still learning the game. I think maybe in a year or two, um, you'll see him kind of mentally strengthen himself to, to not make those mental mistakes and to be a better partner for Burns. But as of right now, I'm concerned playing him next to Burns. Oddly, if you played Ryan again uh, alongside like a Brendan Dillon or something, right? I wouldn't be as concerned but Burns is that wild man, and that's yeah. what makes him so unpredictable and hard to hard to guard sometimes. Same. Great too, yeah. Right, um, and and so great, exactly. Um, he's not your traditional defenseman who's always in the spot that he's supposed to be in. He's kind of all over the place sometimes, and we saw that with uh, him as a forward as well. Jumbo was like, yeah, he just kind of goes out there in skates, and I just kind of find him. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, nobody knows where where he's going to be. I just kind of look up and hope he's there. Yeah. You know? um, but so that's that's what kind of makes it difficult for me in terms of seeing um, Burns playing alongside Ryan is that you've got a guy who's a wild man uh, who we love you by the way we love the wild man <laughs> um, and you've got a guy who maybe isn't as mentally ready to play along some alongside someone who is a little bit more on the wild side right um, if he if Joachim Ryan had like a Paul Martin two years ago as a partner Totally works fine. Right. Paul Martin playing alongside uh, Burns two years ago. Totally fine, right? He's steady. He knows where to be all the mm-hmm. time and whatnot. I just have a problem with Ryan and Burns together. That's that's my only issue. And it's, it's again, comes down to the, the mental part of the game mm-hmm. and the positioning part of the game. Because we've seen many times, what does Burns do when it's a two-on-one? He lays down the ice. He lays down every single time. He takes a nap. Right. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. He has, I, I'm like on the fence about it because sometimes I'm like, why is he doing that? And they're like, oh my God, it worked. Yeah. He got the puck. He has such a long reach yes. with his stick. And I think it, it surprises a lot of people. But I also think towards the end of last season and in the playoffs, we saw that the other teams were definitely scouting for it, mm-hmm. waited for him to go down the ice right. and then, and then made up. a move yeah. and the guy was wide open for a tap in goal. So I think I'm hoping Burns worked on that this year of mm-hmm. staying on his feet, taking the pass away, doing what most defensemen do in those situations. Right. Um, I think he, obviously he can improve on what he's doing. Yeah. I don't think the laying down thing is great unless you're really close to the goal and it's your last desperation. Right. He went. He usually goes too early. Yeah. That's the problem. Um, going back to to Joachim Ryan, I think what mm-hmm. we're gonna see is a rotation, kind of like yeah. last year. We're gonna see Joachim Ryan. Uh, Tim Heed and maybe even DeMello rotated in that first sure. slot and then yeah. ro- basically they're going to be rotating between the first and third pairing. Which is nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Unless the Sharks go out and get somebody. And that's kind of what we were talking about previous too. I remember I was saying my pick being Jordy Ben because I feel like, I mean he had three things going for him. One, um, defensive stay at home type defenseman. The perfect type of player to have uh, alongside of Brent Burns to let him go wild and and he got traded to Montreal, right? Who? Jordy Ben. Jordy Ben? Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah. He was playing for uh, Dallas with his brother. Yeah. And then they went traded over, him. Yeah. So he stay at home, right? Um, big body, right? Um, so, if, you know, body checking and whatnot, I feel like he'd be pretty good. Um, kind of that hard to get around, hard to move kind of thing, you know? So getting in front of that dude like in that battle. Yeah, maybe a little bit stronger than a Dylan. I might be wrong on that. Uh, Brennan, if you're watching, you can. <laughs> You can tell me I'm wrong, and that's totally okay. <laughs> um, and the third thing, of course, the beard. Right. We've talked about the beard. It's magnificent. And to have two beards like that on the same line. 
That'd be three majestic beards on one Phenomenal, team. Phenomenal, wouldn't it? <laughs> gross. And it's red, though, isn't it? So gross. Did it's you see... Big old uh, red beard. Uh, Captain Redbeard. What's his name? Brownie <laughs> shaved his beard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw. That's a shame. Eh, it's time. It's what it is. It's time. Okay. It's gross. Good deal. It's time. <laughs> his was a little more scraggly. When you have birds nesting in your beard, <laughs> it's time. All right. It's coming from a man who grows <laughs> a beard, but... So basically, uh, yeah, on the defensive side, I think uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. Uh, I just I have concerns um, with the partner for Burns and who the right partner ought to be. I don't really have concerns with Ryan. I have concerns with Ryan alongside Burns. That's my only problem. Okay. Makes so um, other than that, I think the last position, obviously being goalie, I, we're so good in the goalie position. It, to me, it's ridiculous, and I love that there was a top. 10 goaltenders in the league and <laughs> he wasn't on there right? he wasn't on there and the majority of them were east coasters and uh, you know Borowski was up at the top of the list I'm I think Borowski's <laughs> probably one of the best goalies in the league sure right but I just I think Martin Jones is a, is a great goalie mm -hmm. I don't think he's an elite goalie just yet in the regular season okay when it comes to playoffs and crunch time to get to playoffs he becomes an elite goalie okay so once uh, late February March and early April hit, he is lights out. Okay. And he really hones in. And I think part of that is the grind. I think he might still not be ready for a full season to be elite an entire season. Mm -hmm. uh, mentally it's not easy to do that. So no, yeah. I think um I think he's a he's a great goalie, but he's not an elite goalie until later in the season. Which I'm totally fine with. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be that way than the other way around where he's an elite goalie and then the playoffs and then, come and yeah. he poops himself. Dang. So Poops himself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Right. laughs> Poops so, himself. Why not? Okay. Um, so I have a toddler. At home. Hey, yeah, no. At, at least you know because we had the episode where we had to apologize. You don't have to do that this time. Right. That's perfect. I love it. Thank you. Um, so and going to the backup position, I think Aaron Dell was rated 81. Yeah. Uh, that's, on NHL 19. That's really high for a really backup. good. Absolutely. So uh, good on you, Deller. That's uh, not bad at all. So. I think well, we have a really good tandem. I definitely. I mean, uh, Aaron Dell could step in for at least twenty games. I think, and and I almost would like to see him step in for twenty games. I like even to see him more. Yeah, to give Jones a little bit more of a break. I, I I understand the mentality of the starting goaltender wanting to play as many games as possible, and um and all that. I don't know if it's a bravado thing or or what the case, or if it's a rhythm thing. You know, I just want to keep it's going, keep rhythm. going, keep going. Yeah. Um, but. I really feel like it, it helps to have that break, and especially when you've got a guy that you can trust in net. Mm -hmm. And I think the guys trust Aaron Dell pretty well in net. So I, I love the tandem that we have. I, I think going over the whole thing again, I think forward core, we're solid at least in the top three lines. I think we're deeper than most teams. I, absolutely, we forward. are. And I think you, we're going to create mismatches, not even just line to line, but also allowing our third line to play up higher mm -hmm. and forcing them to play their third line against one of our better lines, which is going to be, again, a mismatch, and we're going to capitalize on that mm -hmm. more often. I think defensively, there's only the one hole that we've already talked about that I see. I don't think you're as concerned. Um, so I don't think there's really too much really to say on the defensive side, just for that one piece. And in terms of bringing in a difference maker, I don't think that's what Doug Wilson's talking about. I think he just wants to... I don't think we need a difference maker on the defensive side. Not on side. defensive, no. No. I think we have difference makers on defensively with Braun and Vlasic. I mean, anytime they're out there, it's it's shut down time. But I think when when he's talking about a difference maker, he's talking about offense. He's talking about the forward, yeah. He's talking about have, the one seed. Well, no, I mean, as a defenseman... Like an offensive defenseman, where you yeah. have Burns, right? Exactly. Like getting to me, getting Eric Carlson with Burns just doesn't, doesn't make, make sense. Because yeah. would you pair them together? They're because they're both like the same. Very, they're very good offensively. Would you get Eric Carlson and split up Vlasic and Braun? No. See, I wouldn't either. But that's the only way I can see that happening, because then you've got offensive with defensive on two lines and then you've got dilly dilly <laughs> dilly dilly <laughs> um that's yeah, the only I way could, i see it I happening i can see that working i can see it working but you know what braun and vlasic have played together for so long yeah. they know each other so well and that's uh, what makes them but you still you have training camp you have preseason games you you're do. gonna get used to it you've also Switching. yeah you've also got how many years have they played together yeah what if one of them gets injured right yeah like they're obviously gonna play with someone else right and i, I bet you those those coursey numbers start taking a bit of a dive yeah right 
I think they played together so well and they know each other so well, um, and that's part of what makes them such a good defensive tandem is that they know where each other are going to be all the time. And I think splitting them up to play with, say, like a Burns, and if we picked up Carlson with a Carlson, that would it would be hard for them to adjust mm-hmm. to uh, understanding how the other guy plays. Uh, but that's really the only way I could see that working because you put Burns and Carlson on the same line. It's getting me more excited about getting Carlson now. Oh, are you? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> But that's one way I could see it happening. Yeah. Um, and then moving on from from the defensive uh, side, where I think there might be a hole. Goalie, we're so good at stupid. There's no reason to do anything. There's nothing There's to nothing. do a goalie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think from top to bottom, we're looking like a really good team again. Um, so thank you, Kevin Kurz, for your article and your all the points that you wanted us to hit on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Go check it on the Athletic and uh, subscribe to the Athletic. I just said the, the the points that you wanted us to hit on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. Anyway. Sorry. Yeah, that's no, cool. <laughs> so um, yeah, definitely check out the Athletic. Um, they're they're pretty good. The, yeah. the writing and everything's really yeah, yeah. good. So. Yep. Um, so, um, so let's go to our next topic. Uh, yeah. Very hot topic right now for this week is Tyler Sagan. Yes. Um, kind of. Uh, do you, He's pulling a JT. Yeah. So he he <laughs> is in his last year of his contract with the Dallas Stars. Yeah. He's making five point seven five million, I believe. Probably going to get a pay raise about double that. Probably between ten and eleven million dollars, mm-hmm. close to what Tavares got. Not he's quite. still on the younger side too, isn't he? Yeah. He's yeah. he was the same draft year as Taylor Hall. Okay. So it's Taylor and Tyler. That oh, the, right. Yeah. You know, who do That's you right. want? Yeah. So uh, it would be interesting to see Tyler Sagan on another team. That would be his third team. Yeah. Before he's even really, I guess this is his first UFA year. So. Yeah, um, Bruins to to the Stars and then wherever, wherever else. Go. Yeah. So he announced that he doesn't want to doesn't want to renew. I don't know if what what it was. I didn't catch the whole story. I just know that it sounds like Sagan's going to be uh, with somebody else next season, and he's kind of he's giving them the heads up at least and letting them know. I think part of it is Dallas is kind of on the downward trend. They don't really have they don't have a lot going on in the next five years. They look like they're going to be a slight rebuild team or a okay. bubble playoff team, which I don't. They didn't make playoffs last year, so. No. Um, I Wonder. think he's kind of seeing that and going, I think it's time to move on. Well, especially in a contract year. Well, so it's a contract year, yeah. and now he gets to get paid. This is probably going to be the largest contract of his career. Yeah. So he's seeing it as, like like Tavares, like, mm-hmm. why not test the waters? Yeah. So now it's going to be on to Dallas to say, are we going to be like the Islanders and not do anything? Mm-hmm. And, you know, he leaves us for nothing, or do we trade him and try and get some assets? Um, I don't know what Dallas is going to do, and I don't think they would do anything until they know for sure they're not going to be in the playoffs, yeah. and it's closer toward the trade deadline. Yeah. Um, I don't think the Sharks will make a move for Sagan unless it's before training camp in the next week, and I doubt that's going to happen. So why why unless it's before training camp? Uh, just to bring him in and have your depth chart practically ready to go going into mm-hmm. training camp. Um, he get to learn the system. He get to learn the players, rather than let's say, I don't know, a month or two into the season. Mm-hmm. It's a little, not terrible time, just different. Yeah. Um, I don't think the Sharks. I still, I still stand by the Sharks aren't going to do anything until the trade deadline. Okay. Um, but I, I just don't see Sagan coming unless it's the trade deadline and the Stars are out of playoffs, and the Sharks have what the Stars want in yeah. terms of a trade. And other teams don't. Like, there's other teams out there that can oh, yeah. offer more. Absolutely. So, uh, would I like to see Tyler Sagan on the Sharks? Yes. I think he wouldn't quite be a Tavares type. He's up there. Mm-hmm. But it, in the same situation where we'd have uh, Sagan and Couture locked up as a one-two punch up the middle. Long term. Yeah. Long term. Mm-hmm. That's the future. That yeah. would be the future. Right. And you'd still have to... We talked about um, the Joes and age in the previous segment, and that would be a direct replacement for uh, Jumbo. Mm-hmm. Um, you might still be looking at a replacement for Pavelski within, you know, however many years or w- whatever it's going to be. But um, I mean, he's still young enough that he's very effective. So you'd still be able to have, like, say, Kane, Sagan, Pavelski on that top line, mm-hmm. right? If if he were to come in and replace Joe, which is <laughs> just think about that line. That's nasty. Nasty. Imagine they get Sagan this year and they sign him long term, and yeah. then they keep Thornton for another year next year. Oh, <laughs> uh, you'd have to push Tierney down to the fourth line, I guess, which would or suck, as a winger. Yeah, 
I think Thornton, in that situation, he'd be a third line center mm-hmm. and then a power play specialist, essentially. Yeah. Keep his keep his uh, time lower and yeah. keep keep him on the power play. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, actually, you could put him as like a fourth line center, really limit the minutes, really just do power plays and then just make everybody on the fourth line better. <laughs> yeah. Because then you've got four lines Real that can score. Real depth. Yeah. yeah. That's, that would be nuts. But um, that would be if we don't win a cup next season and Joe <laughs> really wants to win a cup. <laughs> and he's really like, yeah, I'll play fourth line minutes. Yeah. Although the fourth line at that point would probably be up from eight minutes to probably 13, 14 minutes. Could be, yeah. And he would be up to like 15, 16 with the power, power play. Power Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, uh, gosh, Sagan. Yeah. I, I mean, it'd be great to have a player of that caliber join the team. Um, but then again, we the same thing that we've talked about with Artemi Panarin, mm-hmm. um, uh, or anybody else that Duchesne. we have to trade for Duchesne. Who do you have to Patch give up? Patch ready. Right? Yeah, yeah. Who are you going to give up? And you know, we can, we do have guys that we can unload. And I think that the guys that you're talking about trading, we talked about, you know, if you had to trade a hurdle, mm-hmm. I mean, first of all, I don't think hurdles going anywhere. We just signed them. Right. I don't think we're going to do a sign for, what was it? Four or five years, four, think, four years. Yeah. You're not going to sign a guy for four years and then immediately trade them. I don't really see that happening, but it wouldn't be out of the question if that's the only guy that they want. So and that's what the team is asking for. Right. And, and you're okay. Hey, well, I really want that player. Then, okay, fine here. Right. Um, but yeah, you start looking at the the guys that we would have to unload, and we just talked about the depth of the team and how we think that you know we're we're in a really good spot. And I mean, as much as I'd love to grab a Tyler Sagan, I also don't want to handcuff us for subsequent seasons, right? You're paying a guy ten million dollars a year. That kind of limits the amount that you can pay these other guys. Um, Pavelski's on a contract year. Are you going to ask him to take a step back? Probably not. So it, it brings in some some cap unfriendly situations. Um, bringing in a, a player of that caliber. So I imagine you're going to have to see somebody who's got a pretty big salary on the way out. And unfortunately, hurdle. that's Hurdle, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, again, I'd love to see him, but it's just what are you going to have to give up to get mm-hmm. to there, right? Yep. So that brings us to our fresh catchphrase. Oh, does it now? Yeah. Okay. It's going to be hashtag Sagan Watch. Oh, Sagan Watch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It sounds like a brand for like a watch. <laughs> right. It's a Sagan watch. Anyway, um, yeah, so let us know what you think about Tyler Sagan. If uh, you think he's going to be on the way out and if you think he's maybe on a chance of coming to the Sharks. Yeah. Hey, if he does come to the Sharks, who do you think we, we're going to end up giving up to go get him? It could be like next or last summer where Tavares signed in the summer with somebody. Maybe the Sharks go court him in the summertime. Same situation. Yeah, yeah it could be. Um, yeah, a, we wouldn't a, a see when? Him this year. We'd see him next year. That's true. Yeah, because then you wouldn't have to trade anything for him. Mm-hmm. Um, so, do you think that he is is traded away uh, this year? Do you think he rides out his time in Dallas and Dallas gets nothing for him? Dallas just stays mediocre all season and then <laughs> just misses the playoffs and then just yeah. like the Islanders and right. then miss out on any assets coming their way. That's true. So yeah. hashtag Sagan Watch. Yeah, yeah, very good. So let's see, next topic. Uh, third jersey. Third jerseys, yeah. Uh, there was a tweet that came out, and I'm sure we'll put it up on the screen. Do you remember what the well, tweet was? Well, there was said? a tweet that Brody had put up back in yes. February where he was talking with, uh, I think it's John Tortora and uh, blanking on the other guy's name, but um, Beck- he, Becker. Becher? Becker. I forget. Beecher. I don't know. <laughs> um, he's going to kill me because, yeah. yeah, I follow him on Twitter, but uh, <laughs> he discussed in the works back then for this season that they're going to have another third jersey and they're going to be using it's funny the, the third jersey that he described which I don't think I saw the clip until recently yeah um, is what we discussed about what we wanted for a third jersey right both options yes Paul likes the screaming shark and I like the old Finn logo that is on this jersey right right here which by the way the uh, screaming shark in the clip they were calling it the yelling shark yeah um, but I got hassled by my boss at work saying, no, it's the screaming shark. So it's screaming. Yeah. One way or another, his mouth is open, and I'm sure there's vocals. And there's so. no stick in the mouth. And there's no stick in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> it's on the patch, right? Nothing on the to choke on. Uh, not on this one. On the newer ones, I think oh. it is. Yeah. But Which we don't have up here. No, we don't. We don't have any No, we don't have a, new a screaming shark. We need to. Yeah. Patrick, get on that. I need That's some right. we'll put it up on the screen. swag. We'll put it up on the screen so you can see the, <laughs> the screaming shark. So the Sharks had a black jersey mm-hmm. as their third jersey for a long time. Right. This year, they don't have one officially on the books yet. Now it's just teal and white. Mm-hmm. So do you think it's going to be on a black jersey? Do you think it'll be on 
a white or teal or yeah. maybe orange. Well, I kind of know you. <laughs> I love orange. Uh, <laughs> I, I kind of know you through on this, so I'll let you talk about that. But I'm still of the mind that it's going to be a black armor type jersey again, um, which I'm not really hating on. I kind of like him, you know. Um, if you remember the first black jersey that they had, had that original logo on it, um, the original Sharks logo, and um, looked really good. Um, no problems here. And then the second black obviously is right here. It's got that Sharks logo on it. Well, now they're pushing the whole screaming slash yelling shark thing. And I think that's just because what's going to be on there. And I think in a couple years, you're probably going to see that as the main logo for the Sharks. Really? You think so? I feel it's going to, that's where everything's going. They're really pushing it. They're they're uh, having people paint it. They're putting it on, on signage and jerseys and everywhere I else. Know. I feel like it's going to become. I think that's pretty iconic. Um, with going back to the original with the yeah. stick and I think uh, we will only see it as a third jersey as the main third jersey potentially. going forward yeah like that would be the alter yeah potentially I have a feeling that it's going to be Completely they're, they're going to flip too. it yeah especially the one that's they got the S underneath it and you can see the difference between these two is this one has the fin on the bottom right the the tail yeah. showing whereas this Versus, one's coming out of yeah. the triangle right it doesn't have it yeah so yeah yeah I, they, it's such a think, subtle difference it's like unless you were really a big sharks fan you wouldn't really notice you'd right. be like yeah it's, it's the same shark choking <laughs> on a stick so I think we're going to see I think we're going to see that at least on, on the black thirds for this season I think you're going to see that shark and um, yeah he has your patches I think will, will be on the, right. uh, the shoulders I think that's what yeah. we're going to see and I have no problem with that if we take a look at the history of the, of the black jerseys then it would be with that logo then with this logo and then with the new logo mm -hmm. and that would be the only thing really that would have changed on them I think there was might have been some other stripes because they They're had all the second have, generation stripes yeah, on well, the first Adidas one Adidas took over from yeah. Reebok so I think that's, a, that's a, these are Reebok jerseys CCM starter so <laughs> They've had many different yeah. uh, brands right. doing their jerseys. So, uh, yeah, I think that's what we're going to see. Um, but you had an interesting um, thing to say about Well, jerseys. just a history of um, Actually, I'm sorry. jerseys. The, the tweet had said, we're not all right, we're not going to do the same thing that everyone else is, is doing. doing. Right? With the right. trend that everyone else is doing. So the trend yeah. everyone else is doing is black jerseys. Dark oh. jerseys. Dark, dark jerseys. Throwbacks. No. That's how I took it. No, I, I saw it as... Dark like, jerseys. Like Phoenix is doing their throwback. You're talking about uh, Carolina potentially doing like the Whalers or something for some. Well, no, they didn't announce that. They already anna Carolina already yeah. announced their third jersey. Okay. And it's the flag, the, the hurricane flag. Right, right, right. Well, so like the Ducks, for instance, they're doing more of a throwback. Right. I thought maybe that's maybe what they were. You're right. That's probably what it I is. I thought maybe they were talking about throwbacks, which again, that kind of lends to we're not going to do the same trend throwing back. We're going to look forward. Using the new shark logo, that but it potentially could, we might be using could be jerseys. on the white jersey. Yes, and I like that. So go ahead and so uh, history, quick history. I yes. guess since we're running a little long here, <laughs> um, teams wanted to use the third jersey. Uh, going, this is going back to post lockout of o three o four season. Teams wanted to use a third jersey, and most third jerseys were dark. Um, and at the time, homes wore white, and away teams wore dark jerseys mm -hmm. so they flipped it so that the home jerseys are now dark because most teams that had a third jersey were dark jerseys right and that would f if they wanted I mean, to wear case it case in point right <laughs> right if yeah. they wanted to wear it the other the away team would have to pack both their white jersey to wear when they wore the third jersey and their away jersey when they played other teams when they're on a long road trip mm -hmm. and it was just too much gear to carry around so they that's why they switched it so but we've seen third jerseys were like the New Jersey Devils. Mm -hmm. Their new third jersey, which I think is awesome, they brought back the green, um, is on a white jersey, mm -hmm. not on a dark jersey. So are they going to wear those at home? Is that going to force other teams to wear their I think that's what you're going to see. Dark jerseys. Yeah. I think it's a little bit easier for New Jersey to do that because maybe they look, they really look at the schedule and they go, mm -hmm. okay, the Rangers are in town across the street yeah you know and they're not on a long road trip so they're just coming for one game and done we'll do, we'll wear the home white third jersey then right that's maybe what they'll do because it's they're so much closer yeah. together um i would still like for the nhl to go back to home whites <laughs> i think uh the dark jerseys look awful i think you look like a road team wow i think the white jerseys <laughs> look clean and nice mm -hmm. on the ice that's my opinion i grew up hockey watching hockey with the white jerseys being home right yeah so i'm i'm still in my brain i'm still used to whites being home 
<laughs> well, you talk about like the whiteout in Winnipeg, right? They'd mm-hmm. have all the the fans wearing white, and they do it still today. Whiteout in Winnipeg, all the fans are wearing white, and the home team is still wearing blue. So yeah, <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of weird, right? Um, so I can I can see that. Um, I don't know. I think with the third jerseys, the reason that you have third jerseys, in my opinion, is to be able to sell more jerseys. Oh, right? totally. Yeah. So I don't see them taking the whites on the road because generally they don't. They're not in front of their home crowd. They're in front of everybody else, right? So I don't think that they would necessarily wear the whites on the road. I so, think you're right, though. I think they would take the third jersey as a white jersey, the Devils, for instance, right. and wear those at home and force the other team to bring their uh, their home jersey. So what I, going back to your point of right. selling jerseys, why not have the third jersey have a home and away version? Uh, fourth jersey. <laughs> fourth jersey, yeah. if you will. Yeah. yeah. Um, then you'd have, I don't know, this in white, mm-hmm. same logo and same design kind of. Right. I don't know, I don't know how that would look. I don't know how, it, it sounds ridiculous now that it's coming out of my mouth, but um, <laughs> I don't know, I just. It was a I'm, good idea, but I, now that I'm talking about I'm it. I'm trying to finagle a way to figure out how to sure. get the white jerseys back at home. That's it. <laughs> I don't he care how much it costs. Just, just wants just the white jersey. do it, just do it. <laughs> nice. Yep, thanks. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I mean, that's just really all I wanted to say about that was... Yeah, you, you could, know, you I could feel tell like us what do you guys... What do you think the yeah. third jersey is going to look like? What, do you prefer home whites or do you prefer dark jerseys yeah. at home? I think the, the AHL know. still does whites for home, right? Do they? I think they do. And I think they wear the oranges and the other team has to bring their whites. I think. I don't really remember. It's been a while. I haven't gone to a game in a bit. It's been a year? Yeah. Well, not a year, but whatever <laughs> six months since they've been playing yeah anyway yeah. so yeah um, let us know what you think if you think uh, I'm on track or if you think Aaron's got a pretty good idea there and um, that'd be yeah. good yeah alright so I think it's time for a story time oh boy you have a story I do have a story let's hear it <laughs> so uh, actually speaking of Barracuda games we were at a Barracuda game uh, me and my wife and my two sons and we're it was in the middle of a, a, a intermission and so I grab my son Cole and he has to go to the bathroom so I go to the bathroom and my wife is with my other son Jace and so I come out of the bathroom you know he's done washing his hands and everything get out there and I hear my wife yelling at me Paul Paul <laughs> like trying to figure out where it's coming from I look I finally see her and she's got my son Jace like held up on her arm and here's Mike Ricci right next to him <laughs> right and um, my son's kind of like doing this, like a little smile and everything, and they're taking their picture, right? Well, I get the whole story after the fact, uh, and it was actually where I got the pictures too, and I'll put the, we'll put the pictures up on the screen. Well, you missed the picture, you didn't get in there. I, I didn't get to, to get into the picture, yeah. So you and Cole missed the picture. So yeah, we missed it, unfortunately, but um, what happened was, my son, Jace, didn't really want to take a picture with Mike Reach because he, he didn't know who he was, yeah. and he was shy about it, and. My wife was saying, no, he's, he was a Sharks player and he was trying to pump him up, but he just wasn't feeling it. So he was kind of doing the like bury the head kind of thing, you know. So um, Mike Ricci, the awesome guy that he is, <laughs> he kind of leans in to my son Jace and he, he whispers like, you know, hey, if you take a picture with me, I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> and so, of course, my son goes, hmm? <laughs> so, a dollar? <laughs> Is a dollar you say? Uh, so yeah, um, so like the next pictures are basically of him like turn and he's kind of like smiling with Mike Ricci and he's got some other one he's got a weird face with Mike Ricci too but like yeah, yeah so and I got the picture after the fact too of, of him holding up the dollar and smiling <laughs> uh, so like I like I said we'll put those on the screen but uh, it was just a really cool story um, you know Mike Ricci just being awesome essentially yeah like Mike Ricci going from the sexiest man alive in Colorado yeah to paying children a dollar <laughs> to take a picture with him poor guy poor guy <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Mike. It's, no, it's, it's funny. It's a funny story. <laughs> yeah. No, it was really cool. Uh, and and Mike, on a personal note, thank you. I really do appreciate it because we got some really good pictures. Uh, and and thanks for giving my son the dollar. <laughs> he really uh, really enjoyed That's it. That's awesome so. that he paid up too. Yeah. Like he I'll said, give he you would, a dollar, and, and then he actually, actually gave him. Yeah. yeah. So um, and it, you know, a whole dollar. Not yeah. Like change. No, no, no. It was a bill. <laughs> yeah. Not quarters. Nothing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Mike, again, you know, thanks on a personal level. Really do appreciate that. That's a really class act. Um, so, anyway, that's my story. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you had, you didn't have anything story wise now. No. Well, well, that's the problem I'll with story time. Up, yeah. 
The problem with story time is you start running out of stories. Yeah. Um, so uh, if anybody uh, from the Sharks happen to be watching, we need to meet more of you so that we can have more <laughs> stories. Uh, and I still haven't seen the locker room, so uh, just putting that out there. <laughs> anyway. Um, I think you put that out there every episode. No, not every episode. This is only the second time. Fact check me. Uh, editor. But Third. Fact check. Third. Whatever. Anyway. So um, <laughs> the last thing I think we need to talk about is that shirt. Because right. we are getting real close to the 200 subs. We're um, at 181 right now. As of recording, yes, we're at 181. And uh, to refresh your memory, at 200 subs, we're going to be giving away another one of our Fin Factor shirts, just a black T-shirt with the Fin Factor logo big on the front. And we got Megan to send a picture in. Uh, her we husband did. was wearing it. Uh, but she sent one in as well, so we'll post oh, both pictures of nice. her and her husband. Okay, in. good, yeah. So, um, same thing for you. You can win this shirt. Please send us a picture of you wearing it, and then we'll happily put it up. How do they win the shirt? They win the shirt by... What's the contest? Subscribing. <laughs> you have to subscribe to YouTube. And then tag three of your friends on any of the social media that we are on. So that's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I don't know if we're doing... That's about it. Yeah, that's okay. three. Um, I guess you could put it in the comments or something in YouTube. I don't know if you could tag people. Yeah, I don't know. maybe I don't know. Either way, we'll 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 see it. We'll notice it. So uh, make sure that you tag three friends. You subscribe to the channel. When we get to two hundred, we're gonna send that shirt out. Yep. Help us grow. Very good. Okay. Anything else? I don't know. Good to That's go. it. Episode All right. Ten in the books. <laughs> and we will see you guys next week. Next week. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Hey everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.